Hello everyone, and welcome back to a little bit more Terra Firma Craft with Night Dagger. Not with the friends this time, I'm actually in a single player world. I'm working on updating our server so that we can play the newest version of Terra Firma Craft. It adds some really cool stuff that we're all kind of wanting to check out. And Well, so I did promise a metallurgy video before I shut down that server. I realized I can just do it in single player, so here I am. Now, I've already got some bars of metal heating up in here. So we'll come back to this in a little bit. But I wanted to come in here and show you guys the process for making black steel. And we'll do it with either blue steel or red steel. Whatever tickles my fancy at the moment. Because the process for blue steel and red steel is the same. It just requires different alloys. Speaking of alloys, this here is a metallurgy table. You make it with a whole bunch of stone put together. As you can see here. It's basically just eight blocks of stone all put together. I'm not sure what all of this is, but go with the eight blocks of stone put together. You'll be fine. Now, with that, what you can do is you can get metal molten over the fire. Now, it has to be molten. It can't be just, you know, sitting around in bar form. It has to be molten and unshaped. But once you have that, you put those four bars in here, and it gives you an alloy here. Now four bars in, four bars out. So you're not losing anything, at least not with the entry level alloys. Eventually you are going to be losing a little bit because you're going to have to do some welding to strengthen the metal, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, the alloys that you're going to frequently encounter in the game are black bronze, which is two copper, a silver, and a gold. Bismuth bronze, which is tin, two copper, and a bismuth. Sterling silver, copper, three silver. Rose gold, which is kind of the same thing, copper, three gold. Brass, which is three copper and zinc. And steel. Yes, steel is an alloy. Three wrought iron. Now notice it has to be wrought iron. You have to work the impurities out and then melt it back down. And a pig iron. Let's come over here and check out how we're doing. So, we've got... That black bronze that I have in my inventory there is holding heat very well. So, we have a whole bunch of alloys heating up in the furnace here. And what we have going is the components to make black steel. For black steel, it requires one black bronze, one nickel, and two steel. Now. The pig iron is also required for this, but we'll get to that in a minute. You can see I've already got all of the metals that I'm going to need heating up in here. We've got brilliant whites on all four of these. So let's go ahead and pull these three bars out. Come over here to our alloy table and put those in there, and you'll see we get unshaped, unshaped weak steel. Now, you can't really do a whole lot with weak steel. You have to kind of bang it out on the anvil like you would anything else. But you're also going to need this pig iron at some point. I'm going to wait for this weak steel to cool down to the point that it turns non-molten. Let's go ahead and take that out. And you know what, let's go ahead and throw these in the chest to see if we can cool them off just a little bit. Because for some reason it doesn't seem to be cooling very well in my inventory. wonder if you change that so that it doesn't cool very well if you're actually holding on to it. There we go. Now, the unshaped weak steel, you have to beat the impurities out. So, you have to follow the normal rules. you got to go and work the anvil, and you still have to follow these rules. Hit, hit, hit have to be the last three. So let's go ahead and give it a few punches, and then go light hit, light hit, light hit. That's going to give you a bar of weak steel. Now you can't do anything with weak steel. You have to harden it up. How do you do that? Well, that's where this pig iron comes in. If you take pig iron and weld it into the weak steel, 
you get a high carbon black steel ingot. Now, it's a high carbon ingot, which means there's still impurities in it. In order to get those impurities out, you have to work it on the anvil again. And with that, you now have black steel. This is ready to be worked into tools or welded into double ingots to make weapons or armor or whatever else you might want to do. So that is the process for black steel. Blue steel is kind of along the same lines. It requires a molten black steel, one bar of bismuth bronze, one bar of sterling silver, and one bar of steel. Now you can see down in the corner I had this black steel. That's because you're going to have to do something with this also. This is the four bars that are going to give you the alloy and this is the strengthener that you have to apply at the end. So let's go ahead and get all of this stuff cooking up over our fire. We'll get that heating up. And then we're going to come over here and this is the components for red steel. Now there are no differences between red steel and blue steel at the moment aside from one. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Red steel requires one bar of black steel, one bar of brass, one bar of rose gold, and a bar of steel. Again you use black steel as the strengthener. Now, with the latest version of Terra Firmacraft, at least the latest version that was released at the time of this recording, um, Biox has just introduced for us buckets. Now, not the wooden buckets, the ones that can only transport the finite sources where you pour it out and it just goes away. He introduced new buckets made of metal that can actually transport source blocks. Now, you would think that blue steel buckets would transport water and red steel buckets would transport lava, but apparently he decided he was going to have some fun with it. It's backwards. Red steel transports water and blue steel transports lava. Now that's as a that's according to the patch notes. I haven't actually tried it myself, so it might actually be the other way around. Who knows? Uh, you can see sterling silver is already liquid. It's only at orange and it's already liquid. It has a very low melting point. You have to be very, very cautious while you're doing this to make sure that you don't get the metals too hot so that they evaporate. Because bismuth bronze, if left to its own devices, it will evaporate. you got to be careful of that. Let's go ahead and pull those out and drop these down to see if we can encourage those to melt a little faster. And let's make it day so I don't have a creeper sneak up on me or something. All right, we have brilliant white, li uh, brilliant white liquid black steel. Now we just need to get the steel up to there. Yeah, it's not cooling in my inventory. I wonder if that's intentional. Have to find out. Might have to pop into the IRC after I get done with this and ask. Alright, so let's go ahead and take the unshaped black steel out. And we'll take this unshaped black steel out as soon as it hits up. Oh, well, it already went a little so far. Alright, and unshaped steel. We come over here and we throw in bismuth bronze, sterling silver, black steel, and steel and something isn't hot enough. Let's go ahead and throw these back on the fire. Now, it's supposed to be as long as it is liquid, it works. With the higher end alloys, I've actually noticed it has to be a little bit beyond where it would normally turn liquid. So let's go ahead and take the sterling, take the black steel, take this, which has now gone back to brilliant white. Let's pull that, and let's take the bismuth bronze out, 
and one, two, three, four, unshaped weak blue steel. Let's go ahead and put that in there to cool down. And while that's doing that, let's work this black steel back into a bar and put our flux in there to get ready. All right, our blue steel has cooled down to the point that it is white hot. And again, it's weak blue steel, so you have to work out the impurities. And now we have a weak blue steel ingot. We are going to combine that with the black steel and weld it, and that's going to give us high carbon blue steel. No surprise, you have to work the excess carbon out. And that is going to give you your blue steel. The process for red steel is exactly the same, it just uses different alloys. So, hopefully, this has given a little bit of insight into exactly how much of a pain in the ass it is to get the high-end alloys in Terra Firma Craft. It's not a matter of, oh, I'm going to throw a whole bunch of stuff in a bloomery and I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to bang it into cool stuff. No, there is actually a fair amount of metal work involved. And bear in mind that I've only made one bar of each of these metals. In order to make a blue steel anvil, it requires 14 bars of blue steel, which means you have to combine the alloys enough to get four bar, or 14 bars of weak blue steel, plus you have to have 14 more bars of black steel in order to strengthen them, and that's just to get your anvil. After that, if you want to actually make tools, you have to go through the entire process again. So, yeah, if you guys see someone running around in blue steel while you're on a Terra Firma Craft server, major props out to them because it's it's a labor of love in order to get that far. Me, personally, hmm, I'm not sure if it's really worth it to me, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, this has been Night Dagger with a little metallurgy class in Terra Firma Craft. And I do have one more tutorial I want to do before I start any more tutorial or any more Terra Firma Craft videos. Um, I want to get into some basic armor smithing because armor smithing is another real pain in the ass when it comes to Terra Firma Craft. So, but that's the subject for another time. I'll catch you guys later.